Polishing a game, what does that mean? When do you do it and why do you do it? In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about polishing your game and making sure that your game has what it needs before it goes out into the wild and before you release it and people start to attack it because it's not good enough. And I'm gonna give you my opinion on what I think about polish, what I've been doing for Legend Bowl, and if I think it's worth doing and how much and when and all that good stuff. So let's start with what is polish, right? Polish to me is all of the stuff that you do to a game to make it pop, to make it make the user and the player feel like they want to play it. It's also like gameplay mechanics. And when, you, when you're when you using the, the joystick or the controller or the keyboard or whatever, and you're controlling the, the player on the screen, it's about how fluid and how comfortable you feel with that player, right? If you jump, how responsive is the jump? You know, if you have like a double jump sequence, how does that feel, you know? What does that feel like? And if you're running or you're jumping, that kind of interaction between the controller, which is in the player's hands, and the actual sprite on the screen or 3D model or whatever it is you're playing, the level of responsiveness that you have between the user and the actual player on the screen is one form of polish. Polish could also could also be sound, right? It could be graphics. It could be design of the level. I mean, polish is, in my opinion, is how much work you're willing to put into any aspect of your game, right? And some people have, there's usually two different philosophies when it comes to polish. There's one group that what they'll do is they'll just do everything really fast. Like they'll put the menus together, they'll put the gameplay together, they'll put the movement of the player. They will work on sound very briefly, but everything is very, very small and prototyped. And then as soon as they feel like it's working enough to keep moving, then they go to the next step and they keep moving. And then what they do is at the very, very end, they come all the way back and do it three or 180 and they work on the polish. And that's when they go in and they refine the sound and the way the graphics look on the menus and the UI and the UX. And that's one way to do it, you know, and it, it works. I mean, I know in the corporate world, I always used to say, are we making a Cadillac or are we making a Pinto? And for those of you who don't know what a Pinto is, think about a very, very cheap, small car. And sometimes you have to build the quick and dirty uh, design or product because that's all you, you just need it to go from point A to point B. You don't need it to, to show off any cool features or anything, any kind of you, you know, user interface um, capabilities or nothing too fancy. And all you're trying to do is just get it out the door, get it to work but you still want to test it, obviously. And you still want to make it to where it works, right? So there's some QA quality assurance part to that that you want to make sure that you have. But when it comes to the other side of the camp, which is what I typically like to do, and it feels like it takes forever to get any, everything done, it's to kind of polish as I go. So if I work on, right now I'm working on the career mode in Legend Bowl. I'm working hard on the career mode, I've got the coach, that you have to build, you go into a, an actual season, I'm working on the schedule, I'm working on the UI and the way everything kind of flows while you're in the career mode. And all of that stuff, you could do it very quickly, very raw and not worry about the graphics or the buttons or anything like that. And you could just run through it and just make it somewhat work. But the way I like to do it is I, I like to actually make it look how it's gonna look in the final game as much as possible. And now if it's something that's gonna be prototyped and I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it or not, then I'll work on it on a, on a prototype level. I'll work on a small uh, scale of it, sample of it. And then what I'll do is I'll push it out into the, you know, into the game and I'll run it and I'll play it and I'll see if it actually makes sense. Or if it's a feature or a game mode that I know, I don't know for sure I'm gonna actually have in the game, then I might do something quick and dirty just to get me by you know, just to get it to, to, to work and keep me from being bottlenecked and any dead end type of things. I can keep moving on. But for things that I know I'm going to be working on, 
and I know are going to be in the game, I like to spend a considerable amount of time on it because I know that it's going to be in the game and I want it to look good. I don't want it to look like crap. I don't want it to be, you know, something that I don't feel is going to work or I'm not going to fully test it or make sure that it's not, you know, up to you know, a certain standard of, of just controls and all that good stuff. And, and, I, and, and so there's, there's that bit of polish that I like to do as I go and I'm doing it in my game. The problem with that though, is that if you work on something that you may not include in the game or you may not ever finish your game because you did too much polish and the game's not, never gonna get done and that could happen. I mean, if you're too uh, OCD about it and you're way too critical with, with what you're working on, then you're probably not gonna finish your game. And you're gonna be stuck with this polished prototype, you know, of a full game. So there's definitely a balance between the two. And I know for you guys who are out there who are making games or who wanna work on video games and don't know which route to take, I think the, the recommended route would be if you know it's gonna be in the game, if you know it's critical, which by the way, this is the precursor and prerequisite to everything that I'm talking about now, which is before you start working on your game, you need to have a good idea of what you're working on. Now you don't gotta go out and make this 500 page game design document that some people may tell you in the industry that you have to go do. And there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a time and a place for something like that. But if it's just you or a small group of indie devs, I think the best thing is to go and find an idea, play around with some ideas, brainstorm, throw things in the wall, see what sticks, prototype them, start to feel the mechanics and feel how the gameplay might be. And if you think it's something that might be lucrative and may have some actual legs that can grow from it, then that's when you can start to apply some more design and planning and get your eggs and you know and your ducks in a row and, and get everything lined up to what you need. But once you have that design, which is the prerequisite to the polish, then it's like, if you know you're gonna work on this screen and you know you have to get that screen done no matter what, why wouldn't you make it look like the final version? Unless you think the art style is gonna change, but once you lock in your color palette and you lock in your art style and you know what you're going with and your game is somewhat mature, put the polish on. That way when you go back, you don't have to re, like remember everything you did, open up old code and figure out why you were doing that and, and what you were doing there and what worked and what didn't work. And then you also, in my opinion, you lessen the bugs along the way because if you're working through it and you're doing the proper testing and proper uh, planning and you are putting in the right amount of work to get these modules all put together, well, you're going to have less kinks in your chain, right? You're going to have less weaknesses in your entire uh, skeleton. So I like to do the polish all the way through as I go through. And when I come back at the end of doing the actual game, then that's why when I do my full testing, I go through, I try to do regression testing. I try to just bang on every single piece you can and break and do things that people wouldn't think they wanted to do with the game, right? Like just work on things that are push buttons that you would never think you'd, you'd be pushing, right? Like push Y when you can only push A, right? And, or mash the keyboard down and mash the controller down or change your resolution. I mean, things like that are gonna need to be tested to make sure that the game can handle any type of input. And you're never gonna get it perfect, nor do you really need to handle every single type, but you wanna handle the ones that are mainstream, the ones that actually are gonna be most likely done by some user out there. And for some reason, they always find a way, they always find a way to, to push those buttons, right? And, and go the wrong direction. So what does that mean? That means that if you're working on your first game or you're working on games or you've been doing this for years, I think you should reconsider or think about how you do polish. I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys are doing so I can learn as well and find out how much polish do you really need to make a game successful? Like, do you really need a lot of polish? Can a game be really, you know, really basic and simplistic and not really have a lot of the bells and whistles that you would want to have in a AAA game? Can you do that in an indie game? And what areas can you do it in? Can you skimp on the on the UI and get really, really, really deep into the gameplay? 
Or do you want to flip it? Do you want to do less gameplay and more UI? I think it depends on the game. I think it depends on what you're working on, what your core audience is, because one of the things that you guys have to remember that are indie developers who, who, are, who are aspiring indie developers, or you just like games in, in general, when you're building a product and you're building something like a video game, you have to keep in mind what your end user is going to be and who is your target market, right? And if your target market doesn't care, could care less about the menus and the UI, and they really, really, really want well done quality gameplay, well, that's what you should be focusing on, right? Or if they want really, really nice, clean art and three-dimensional, high res, uh, high polygon count art, then you're gonna wanna make your art shine, right? So whatever your core audience is that you're looking to satisfy, that should be what you attack and where you put your priorities because you can't do it all. I mean, you can if you have an unlimited budget and unlimited time and resources, but most people don't. I know I don't. So that's my opinion on polish and what you guys should be doing for games and what I'm doing. Leave your thoughts and your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. How do you make your games? What do you think about polish? And how do you think polish really translates to a successful game versus one that's not as much of a success. Well, let me know. I'll catch you guys in the next video and we'll do it again soon.